everybody's really high on obviously Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm -hmm. out of Ohio State. Do you think he's the clear cut best pass catcher, Lou? I don't think it's clear cut, okay. only because I think in NFL circles right now, it's not clear cut. There are many mm -hmm. people who believe that Malik is right there with him. And really, it's going to be subjective. It's going to be all about taste. It's going to be all about what you want. Yeah. And look, typically, I remember asking Devontae Adams this question this past year or a year ago. I said, you know, what is a number one receiver to you? Just tell me what that is. He says it's a guy, Shannon, who lines up on the outside, either as the X or the Z, and everyone knows they're going to him. And, every, and you still throw it to him, he can still make the catch. He can still win on the outside when he doesn't have all that space that all the slot players have to work with, and he can go up and elevate over people and win. And really, that's what Marvin made his name on at Ohio State. He's really an outside lane guy about 70% of the time, and otherwise they'll move him around a little bit, but he's really an outside lane guy. And then there's people right now who say Marvin isn't, isn't as, as tough at the catch point as Malik is, isn't as – you know, ferocious in terms of being a competitor at the catch point, which I say that's BS. That, that's not true. You can throw, throw on the tape and you can see that. But I'll say this about Malik right now. This guy averaged, what, about 17 yards per reception. He was about 50-50 inside and outside. And his run after the catch, his mm -hmm. run after the catch is some of the best you will see in football. And right now he's about, he averaged for his career about a full yard more than what Marvin averaged after the catch. And I think that's the separator. That's the thing that people right now are just enamored with. They think that Malik Neighbors is Jamar Chase Jr. That's what they think he is. That mm -hmm. kind of guy. And when you see him up close and personal, I'm telling you now, he is rocked up. He's built like a running back in his lower half and still got a 42-inch vert, still can run 4 3 8 in the 40, and still has the kind of catch, the kind of catch radius that you wouldn't think a guy who is sub six foot has. Look, he's the truth. I would still take Marvin first if it was me. But Malik is right there. I agree with everything you said. I was going to say the exact same thing, so I won't expound on it. But when you look at him, like you said, the way he's built through his lower extremities, it lets you know that he's explosive and he's tremendous run after the catch. So we're not going to always be able to get you the ball down the field. We're going to mm -hmm. have to run some bubble screens, some jailbreak screens. We're going to have to get the ball in your hands quick, uh, Luke, and you're going to have to do the rest. And mm -hmm. you, like you said, he can high point. Look. There's a difference in size. So uh, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a little bigger receiver. But I watch Malik Neighbors. He can high point the football. He's an explosive. He's an explosive player. And he has what they call that dog in him. When he puts mm. the ball in his hands, he almost turns into a running back. He runs with that type of ferocity once he has the ball in his hands. I agree with you. The bloodlines are too great to pass up. I know he's been coached up really well by his dad. And we know those receivers at Ohio State how they come out and perform well in the NFL. So I would agree with you. I would take Malik, uh, I would take Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm -hmm. first. But to think that this, this vast discrepancy between mm -hmm. the two is just not true. Well, let me say this, guys. As, as the novice of the crew, I'll defer to the both of you, but for, the clar for clarity purposes to our viewers, let me throw this out and then leave this to y'all. So we're talking about guys like Jamar Chase and mm -hmm. Odell Beckham Jr., right, that have come out of LSU, and that's just to name a couple. Yeah. There's been a lot of sensational mm -hmm. receivers coming out of Justin LSU. Justin Jefferson, yeah. That's Justin Je Of course, how could I forget him, Justin Jefferson. Napers finished his career as LSU's all-time leader in reception mm. and receiving yards. Despite those dudes being there, he's widely considered the reason that Jaden Daniels won the Heisman, okay? Mm -hmm. So we got to get that out the way, right? I'm looking at this right here. 17 catches of 30-plus yards led the nation. Had nine 100-yard games in college playing in the SEC. Is it just about it? Does it come down to the bloodline? Does it come down to the coaching of Marvin Harrison, the great Marvin Harrison Sr.? Is that what this is? Because well, based on what everybody's saying, what we're seeing or whatever, you actually could make an argument that neighbors should go as the first receiver instead of Harrison Jr. So, Lewis, I'll come to you first, and Shannon, mm -hmm. take it from Lewis. How can we definitively say what would be the argument that Marvin Harrison Jr. should definitely be the first receiver taken ahead of Naples? Yeah, I, I don't think you can make an argument, Stephen A., that says definitely. Because, again, this is right. going to come down to really about taste. But I'll say this. Marvin matched his production in 23 as compared to 22 when he had C.J. Stroud with Kyle McCord throwing in the football this year. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about who he had thrown him the ball as opposed to who Malik had thrown him the ball. Now, I know you people will say, look, he also had Brian Thomas Jr. out there with him. 
So yeah. they had a lot of weapons that they could they could pick and choose to throw the football to at LSU. Well, look. Yep. Uh, Ohio State ain't hurting for wide receivers either. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, what I'm saying is this. Marvin, considering that sometimes it looked like me throwing the football to him out there this year, the fact that he still was able to come up with 14-plus receptions, I mean touchdown receptions, average over 17 yards per reception, and still be that guy when everyone knew they were trying to get him the football, and he had, this, he had the fight. He had the fight to make some absolutely just ridiculous catches. I would say this. If C.J. Stroud had been there again this year, if he had had comparable quarterback play, he would have been up above 15, 1,600 yards receiving as well. And I saw them both in person. I saw Marvin work out for C.J. last year at C.J.'s Pro Day. And they were, look, half the people were watching Marvin Harrison work out. They were like, yeah, C.J., that's cool. We know you're going to go one or two in the draft. But do you see this guy? This guy could be the first pick of the draft. That's how good this young man looked out there at 6'3", 210, 215 pounds. He looked like the prototype. He really yep. did. Do you think Marvin has the highest upside? Yeah. Whew. Ooh. You know, Lou, we always say this. It's not how high you go. It's where you go. Yeah. Who's going to be throwing Marvin Harrison Jr. the ball and who's going to be throwing Malik Neighbors the ball? Now, if, if the draft mock are true, I like Kyler Murray throwing the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr. as opposed to Daniel Jones potentially mm -hmm. throwing the ball to Malik Neighbors. That's what it comes down to when you uh, – uh, uh, now, every once in a while you get a situation like a D-hop, and D-hop, it didn't matter whether he mm -hmm. had Case Keenan, whether he had Deshaun Watson, he had Brian Hoyer. It didn't matter who was throwing D-hop the ball. He was going to be first team all pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really, it's really contingent on where they go and who's throwing them the ball. But I believe it's going to come down to bloodlines, and I believe this is why they're going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. He is the bigger receiver. He's probably right three and a half, four inches uh, bigger. But Malik Neighbors can high point the football. He's an explosive. It tells me when you have a 42-inch vertical and then you watch the tape and you watch them test, it lets you know it confirms everything that you saw on, uh, everything you saw on tape. He confirmed that it is pro day. Yeah. He, he looked explosive he played explosive and I would you know I wouldn't have a problem if something it's kind of like they took uh, uh Bryce Young and CJ Stroud fell to the yeah. Houston Texans yeah I don't think anybody's gonna be disappointed if they get Malik neighbors Lou yeah look of course not and I'm with you look they're both freak shows in their own right they yes. just look different they just look different quite honestly look Malik and Brian Thomas kind of they're, they were the, fir the perfect complements to one another. Because, you know, look, Shannon, you know this better than anybody. Building a wide receiver room is kind of like building a basketball team. You yeah. want different sizes and shapes. You want yes. different guys who can do different things. And really, I, I think everybody, ideally, if they were putting together a football team, would want to start with the prototype. They'd want to start with the Devontae Adams-looking wide receiver, yeah. the Justin mm -hmm. Jefferson types, the 6'2", 6'3", 210, 215, 4'3", type of guy who lines up at the X first – then you put him at the Z. Then you, then you go, look, on move third down, we're just going to yeah. move him around and put him where we need to. Yeah. And, that, and really, that's Marvin. That, that, that's the prototype. But Malik, look, I saw him just warming up before he did his vertical down there at LSU. And I'm telling you, just sitting there bouncing up and down, he was probably doing 38, 37 vertical, just messing around. Mm -hmm. And you're right. He is. He's humble, but he's also cocky and confident. Look, Brian Kelly, Kelly told me, this is a young man who – People don't understand where his, you know, what his place is in LSU history. But Stephen A., you already articulated that. This guy is for real. This is a hell of a wide receiver draft. You can't go wrong with some, well, really the top three guys if you throw Rome in there too with Dunze. Right. I'm just looking at it from this standpoint, guys. I'm like, as long as there's no discrepancy like there is between C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. Obviously, those are quarterbacks. These are wide receivers mm -hmm. that we're talking about. So the mm -hmm. likelihood of that happening is slim to none just based on the position alone. You usually don't see that wide of a discrepancy mm -hmm. when you're hyped as a receiver. It's more risky at the quarterback mm -hmm. position. I get that. Mm -hmm. But still in all, I think that considering the level of talent that we're talking about here, you certainly don't want to see any kind of drop-off, and I don't think you see it right here. Right. 